This video introduces tracking to a constrained dual mode approach. The previous video then demonstrated how you could incorporate constraints into an OMPC or SOMPC algorithm, but we focused on the regulation case. The easiest method was to form an autonomous model which represented the predictions and then basically expressed constraints using the same state as you had in this autonomous model. And then what we did is we used the admissible set algorithm to define the constraints over the infinite horizon. What we need to do now is extend this scenario to deal with tracking scenarios because what we did in the previous video just considered regulation. First a reminder then of how you might go about finding the maximum admissible set which underpins our constraint handling. You have to express the predictions in a form like this, xk plus 1 equals axk, where it's assumed that the limit as k goes to infinity of a to the k is naught. Also, at each sample, express the constraints in a form like this, gxk less than or equal to f, where it's assumed that f is strictly bigger than 0. And then there's a piece of code, which a very simple code we've provided, find mas.m, which will determine the mas for this system, that is the one that comprises sample constraints and a given transition. And the MAS, we tended to use the notation fx less than or equal to t. Next, what we want to do is introduce tracking into the SOMPC or OMPC algorithm. Now, this was discussed in the previous chapter, so we're just going to remind you of the basics. In essence, we need to define a disturbance estimate, so the difference between the process output and a model output, and then we can use that disturbance estimate, so you'll notice that goes in here, in combination with the desired target R, in order to estimate what steady state values of X and U will give me offset free tracking. So that's the first step. We need to find the steady state values of U and X. Then what we did is we said let's define some deviation variables, which is the distance of X from its expected steady state, and similarly for the input. After that, we defined our predictions in terms of these deviation variables. So you see we've got x hat k plus 1 equals phi x hat k plus b c k and so on. And we also expressed our performance index j in terms of the deviation variables. So this was all done in the previous chapter. So what do we summarize? Apart from a simple variable change, and that simple variable change is the introduction of these deviation variables, we found that introducing tracking into SOMPC or MPC is the same. You get the same algorithm, just use deviation variables instead of other variables. OK, in the last video, we looked at how we would form an autonomous model for prediction in the regulation case. And now what we want to do is the same trick but instead use deviation variables. So in this case, you'll see that the mode 1 and mode 2 predictions, this is exactly the same as the previous video, except I've got x hat and u hat. <coughs> so if you look at the previous video, you'll see these equations are identical apart from the replace by deviation variables. And therefore, the autonomous model formulation is also identical to the previous video, as long as you define z in terms of the deviations on x. Otherwise, the steps are identical to the previous video, so I'm not dwelling on them. And what this means is I can still come up with a prediction model of this form. Zk plus 1 equals psi Zk, where Zk is defined as the deviation x over c future. What about constraints? Now we need to be a little bit more careful with constraints because constraints aren't usually defined on deviation variables, they're defined on absolute values. So let's assume we've got limits on the input and what I've done here is I've simply replaced UK as UK hat plus USS so that I've expressed the input limits and related them relative to my deviation variable because that's what I want. So this means 
then my input constraints are going to take a formulation a bit like this. And what do you notice? My right hand side has got u over bar and minus u under bar, but it's also got these USS terms. In a similar way, if we do limits on the states, you'll notice that I've substituted, um, instead of writing xk, I've written x hat k plus xss, and therefore my state constraints take a form like this. I'm not covering input rates yet, as discussed previously. So if I combine all those together, then what you find is that G looks like this, and that, in fact, is the same as in the previous video, as long as you accept that Z has a subtly different definition. But F looks very different. In the previous video, we just had this bit, but now we have to add on this bit, which depends upon the expected steady state. And what I'm going to do finally is I don't like carrying around this USS and XSS. It looks a bit messy because I happen to know that I can define XSS and USS in terms of my desired target and this disturbance estimate, which we talked about earlier. So if I make that substitution, this is what you end up with. You notice that your F depends on the limits, which are fixed, but it also depends on some matrix times r minus d. And this is quite important. But if I know r minus d, I can now define my f. So a summary. We've defined our predictions in the standard form, zk plus 1 equals psi zk. We've defined our constraints in the standard form, g zk is less than or equal to f at every sample. If I put those two together, then I can find an MAS, or in fact, because it includes the C terms, you probably should call it an MCAS for this system. So the MCAS is given by this form, but what we did previously is we said it's convenient to unpack this a bit, that is to separate the bit that multiplies x hat and the bit that multiplies C, and then I can define formally my set within which a deviation variable x hat um, is basically feasible, which means there exists a C such that I can satisfy these inequalities over there. So I've basically got an admissible set for my deviation variable x hat. And these constraints over here are the ones that you will put into the QP in your OMPC or SOMPC algorithm. And you'll notice the only real change from the previous video is that the T is essentially going to be different because the T had the steady states embedded in it. Now there's a difficulty here. You may have observed that the inequalities depend upon the expected steady state. And we've assumed that that's known. We can just write it down. But in practice, every time you change the target, or every time the disturbance estimate changes, this will change. And this is going to create a headache for typical MAS algorithms, because the MAS algorithm assumed the inequalities at each sample are fixed, and thus the MAS is fixed. Now, for now, we're going to ignore this subtlety, and we'll demonstrate how the MCAS changes for tracking problems. Okay, um, We'll revisit it in a few videos' time. But just to note, there are alternatives. You can, for example, just define the constraints up to a large horizon, as long as you choose large enough, but this can be quite conservative and produce very large numbers of redundant inequalities. Um, but I'm not going to dwell on that discussion for now because we'll revisit this in a bit. So the MATLAB code then. Again, we're only going to give a few examples here because what we've discussed in this video assumes you have fixed non-zero targets. So we haven't allowed for time varying targets, so it doesn't make sense to do an excessive number of examples. And we'll just demonstrate that you can actually produce these MCAS, you can use them, and everything does indeed work as you expect. And so there's two key examples, video 10, example 1, example 2, and example 3. Example 1 and example 2 are in fact the same example with just some subtle changes. So just to remind you, as ever, that if you want to look at the code, there you see there's video 5, example 1, and you'll see it's got all the normal stuff, define your A, B, C, D, define your weights, your limits, etc, etc. If I press F5, I can run that, and there come the plots. Similarly, you've got example 2, and you've got example 3.
example three is a got three states. So if you want to go and play with those files, run them, edit them, do what you like, um, the operation should be fairly self-explanatory. So let's look at example one. So this one, we've chosen nc equals four, and we've just applied the OMPC algorithm. And what you will have noticed if you looked in detail is we've set r equal to one. Now we've not run this to um, to settling, but what you can see is the is the output is gradually moving to the correct target. You can also see that if you look at the state evolutions, the states start here and move, and you see they're going to a position which is clearly not zero because zero is over here somewhere. So it's converging to a point which is not the origin. You can also see the constraint handling has taken place. The input is fixed at its limit for the first few samples and we have CK not equal to zero. So this code is just demonstrating that indeed as expected applying the constraints using these inequalities has worked correctly. It's done what you expected. Um, you can see the cost is monotonic. Everything is as you expect. Now, if you were to plot the corresponding sets, which you might want to do, okay, for this particular example, then what you'll notice is we have a start point. So we start here and we end somewhere around here. And again, just to illustrate the key point, where is the origin? The origin is somewhere around here. So you can see clearly this is doing your tracking problem. It's not taking you a regulation problem to the origin. It's taking you to the desired steady state. Now, the other thing you'll notice, of course, is that the MAS, as discussed in the previous video, where you, in the MAS, essentially you've got U hat equals minus K X hat. That's where that control law will be feasible. And that's quite a small region. But clearly, if you add the C variables, then your MCAS is much, much bigger. And so it's showing you that applying the proper OMPC algorithm using these perturbation variables C has allowed you to start outside the MAS and move safely into the MAS while satisfying constraints. And that's what you want to know. Everything seems to be working well. Now, example two is just showing the same system, but there's a subtle difference here. We've just reduced NC equal to two so that you can see what the difference is. And the key difference is you'll notice the MCAS is much smaller. So if I put the two side by side, you'll see when NC equals two, the MCAS is here. And when NC equals four, the MCAS is here. And so what that's showing you is that as you increase NC, so you allow more flexibility in your predictions, then the admissible region gets bigger. And we'll revisit that probably in a later chapter. Example three has got three states, and that means it's quite hard to plot the admissible sets. So we're not going to bother. But the key thing here is to, or two key things to note. Number one, this is an SOMPC algorithm, not an OMPC algorithm, which is why you'll, oops, you'll see that these C values are not zero because it's SOMPC, but you can still see the constraint handling happening. So we're on the limits just there. Okay, so the constraint handling is still happening. It still works. And the other thing you'll notice is we've gone to a non-zero target as expected. So it's taking you up to one, not to the regulation problem of zero. So some warning. The MATLAB code provided for determining the main cast is simple and transparent, but it's not efficient. OK, so we've focused on providing code you can look at and say, yeah, I can see what's happening. It makes sense. But we haven't focused on efficiency. If you have slow systems or large numbers of states and so on, then you'll find that it's probably so inefficient it might not work well at all. And one of the things it doesn't do, which it certainly should if you wanted an efficient code, is you need an effective mechanism for removing redundant constraints. So in summary, this video has shown how an invariant set or MCAS can be constructed for OMPC or SOMPC and specifically for a tracking problem. However, there is a weakness and that's the admissible set algorithm is based on fixed inequalities.
and these are the fixed inequalities that we used. And in particular, you'll notice it assumed that r minus d was fixed. And in practice, of course, they will not be fixed. Even if the set point r was fixed, the estimate for d would change every sample. So if r or d change, then we would need to recompute our admissible set. And therefore, we need some alternative for finding these sets which is more flexible to deal with the online variations that will happen in practice.